sometime after 11 p.m. on December 30, 2000, Mikio Miyazawa, 44, his 41-year-old wife, Yasuko, their 8-year-old daughter, Nina, and their 6-year-old son, Ray, were killed by an unknown intruder. Before getting into the video, please subscribe to the channel. The perpetrator of the Setagaya family murder bizarrely remained in their home for hours, eating their food, sleeping on their sofa, and using their toilet like some twisted version of Goldilocks, with seemingly little to no concern of being caught in the act. Yasuko's mother, who lived next door, found their bodies on the morning of New Year's Eve. Unable to reach her daughter, their phone had been disconnected, presumably by the killer, she unlocked the front door of their house and made a gruesome discovery, the body of her son-in-law, Mikio, lying at the bottom of the stairs, covered in blood from multiple stab wounds. She continued up the stairs and found the body of her daughter covering her dead granddaughter. Ray's body was lying on a bunk bed in the adjacent bedroom, unlike the others, he had been strangled. Desperately, she searches for signs of life, before calling the police still covered in the blood of her loved ones. Yasuko was a tutor and Mikio was working for a British marketing company. Nina was in second grade, Ray was a kindergartner. Father Mikio Miyazawa, Mother Yasuko, and eight-year-old Nina died from multiple stab wounds, while the youngest, six-year-old Ray, was strangled. Yasuko was stabbed so viciously in her chest and head that her bones were visible. Police concluded that the family had been murdered the night before, at approximately 11.30 p.m. Police speculate that by scaling a tree, the killer managed to gain entry to the house through an open window on the second floor. He removed the window screen and sneaked in while the family were fast asleep. First to die was their young boy, Ray. The killer strangled him in his room, but not soundlessly, alerting Mikio, who rushed upstairs to confront him. A vicious fight ensued. Mikio did not make it easy, inflicting several wounds on the killer, but a sashimi knife through his head ended the struggle. The blade broke off in Mikio's skull, and the killer went on to finish off Yasuko and Nina with the broken knife, eventually replacing it with a knife from their kitchen, and stabbing them far beyond the point of death. By the actions of one despicable man, a loving family was massacred. However, the strangest aspect of the case is what happened after the family were slaughtered in their home. Instead of fleeing the scene of the crime, the murderer lingered in their house for several hours, browsing the family computer, drinking bottled tea from their fridge, enjoying a melon, and eating four ice creams. Once he was satisfied, he proceeded to use their toilet, leaving his waist unflushed and on display for police to find later. He treated the injuries he sustained during the attack with supplies found in the home, including first aid kits, then proceeded to take a nap on a sofa in the living room. Some of the drawers had been ransacked, and some money had been taken, but more was left. Money was clearly not what motivated the murderer. He also left behind some of his own items, the broken sashimi knife, a scarf, a hip bag, a sweater, a jacket, a hat, gloves, shoes, and two handkerchiefs. Clues were abundant, as the killer had taken no care to conceal his time spent in the family home, leaving behind fingerprints, feces, and blood. His carelessness gave police ample evidence to build a profile and learn more about him. A closer inspection of the family computer revealed that it had connected to the Internet after the murders had already been committed. First at 1.18 a.m. and later at 10 a.m., around the time when Yasuko's mother arrived at the scene. 
whether the second connection was caused by Haruko accidentally bumping the mouse remains unclear, but it is unlikely that the perpetrator stayed until then. Police estimate that he remained in the house for between two and ten hours. Several of the items the killer had left behind, such as the sashimi knife and some of his clothing, had been purchased in the prefecture of Kanagawa just outside of Tokyo. What's more, the sweater the killer had left behind was fairly unique, with only 130 sold in total. Police managed to track down 12 of the 130 people who had bought one, but none of them could be linked to the crime. Trace amounts of sand found inside the hip bag was determined to have originated in the Nevada desert, and investigators managed to narrow it down further to the area surrounding the Edwards Air Force Base in California. This led to suspicions that the suspect might have served in the U.S. military especially considering the country's prominent military presence in Japan. Fingerprints at the scene resulted in no matches in any databases. An analysis of the killer's feces revealed he had eaten string beans and sesame seeds the previous day, not much to go on. More interesting was what the killer's type A blood told investigators. A DNA analysis of the blood determined the killer's gender as male and revealed him to be possibly mixed race. Maternal DNA seemed to point at a mother of European descent, possibly from a southern European country. It is important to note, however, that many Japanese people, one in thirteen, have some European ancestry. Paternal DNA showed a father of East Asian descent. His mixed DNA made the Tokyo Metropolitan Police concerned that the killer might not have remained in Japan after the murders, which prompted them to seek help from the International Criminal Police Organization. Police determined the killer's height to be around 170 centimeters and described him as having a thin frame. He was right-handed based on the wounds he had inflicted on the family members. His age at the time of the Setagaya family murder could have been anything from 15 to 35 years. Sadly, 22 years after the fact, no killer has been brought to justice for the Setagaya family murder, despite approximately 246,000 officers having been involved in the investigation. There is an active 20 million yen reward, or approximately $140,000 for anyone able to provide information leading to the arrest of the killer, and as many as 35 officers are reported to be assigned to the case. Flyers requesting more information were still being handed out as of last year, and a spokesman for the police stated that the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department will never give up until the case is solved. Today, the Miyazawa's home in Setagaya remains uninhabited and is on the brink of collapse. No motive has been established, and none of the theories suggested over the years is particularly convincing. <laughs>